Today we are going to be turning this into this. We're going to be using traditional full-size bricks for some details and then we're going to be using thin brick for a majority of the work. Thin brick come in two styles. There are corner pieces and there are flats. A lot of folks refer to thin brick as fake brick or lick and stick brick, but it's actually real brick that's been sawed down to a thin size and it gets rid of a lot of the mass of the brick. You don't have to have a big footing for it to sit on and it can glue directly to a wall. So we're gonna take the boring walls back here, dress them up, give them a little bit more personality and character with some brick. Our first step is gonna to be to prime the walls. All we're trying to do is take away the porosity of the drywall so that the adhesive doesn't just all suck out and go into the wall. I'm using a PVA drywall primer. It's very inexpensive and it does a fantastic job of sealing up the pores of the face of the drywall. I cut a few spacer blocks at uh, 7 16 of an inch, just a little over 3 8 to get that deep joint look. And uh, I'm gonna start by laying out the corners of this pilaster here. The manufacturer of the brick recommended this Loctite PL. Quick Grip was the actual one he recommended, but they didn't have that in stock, and he said the subfloor would be just as good. This pilaster here is gonna get a stacked corner, and then it's gonna get running bond in between the corner. I just want that little bit of a pattern in the wall. I think it'll look cool. I'm laying out this back wall here, just like you would do a tile job to see if you can get holes and where you have to cut one and making sure they're all evenly spaced. I like to lay them all out so I can see them and select the order in which they'll go so you don't have a bunch of peach colored ones all together or a bunch of dark colored ones all together. There's gotta be a good mix or your eye will pick it up. Each brick yielded two ends and like everything else, you want to kind of scramble 
what happened here just randomly. But you don't want it to look you don't want it to look like a checkerboard either. <laughs> These are gonna be extra heavy because they're twice as thick. You can never take too much time laying this out. These bricks have to look equally spaced. They have to be on the arch. They have to all be kind of dividing the angles equally. Uh, and then lastly, I picked up a piece of local stone just out on a walk the other day, just kind of a flat piece that's, uh, it's a little thicker on one side than the other, but I'm gonna, I've got a pencil mark on there now just to clean up this edge and then we'll measure it out and make it fit this hole before we start putting everything up on the wall here. I whipped up a quick little arch jig, just a couple wedges in the corner, a two by four in the middle, and then a real thin 3 16 inch piece of wood bent over the top. Got to fill this spot here, and I'm looking at some people call this a basket weave. It's a herringbone pattern, but it's doubled up. Or this, which would be a Flemish bond, I believe, which is every other one, every other brick is a stretcher, which is the long one, or a row lock, which is the short one. I think I like the look of this basket weave up here. So I've laid out a center line here, and I'm gonna drive myself insane. <laughs> Uh, laying this pattern. I cut some smaller blocks so that they would fit inside of the length of a brick So it's just shy of a brick and then this longer one is uh, just shy of two brick And I should be able to if these things will cooperate. I should be able to lay them up that way I don't know if this is the exact method that you're supposed to use, but whenever I do patterns like this in tile or anything else, I always start with all the whole pieces first and get as many whole pieces as I can lined up. And then I do all the cuts. And uh, I don't know, again, I don't know if that's the right way to do it, but that's the way I'm doing this one. So now that I've got all the whole pieces in, I've got my keystone and my arch and all of that stuff. I'm ready to start concentrating on the little, <laughs> the tough pieces that go in between. I've got everything filled in except for a couple little spots up here where you have to cut the bricks in a big triangular fashion and trust me you you could maybe do it with a brick hammer <laughs> but it's going to be very very difficult so um, I'm gonna cut these few on the saw and then we'll fill those in and it's time to grout we've got our pastry bag here and sometimes you might have to cut a little bit off the end just to make it big enough. Uh, these come out of the factory kind of small. I've got a bucket scooper here and that's what we're going to use to load the masonry bag. And then lastly, I've got my jointing tool. I've got a couple inches of water in the bottom of this. I like to work in small batches because I, <laughs> I do work slow. 
So we're gonna add some of our Type S to the water. If you're using a battery powered, uh, just you know, box store kind of drill like this, put your setting back here on the lower, slower setting. It'll give you more torque. This is what I like it to look like. It's, uh, some people describe it as cake batter. It's a little bit, just a little bit lumpy, kind of sticks to the paddle. One of the things that I like to do is just step on the end of it so that the mortar can't come out. Again, this is just a bucket cleaning trowel, it's not necessarily a masonry piece. I think you usually find them in the drywall world. Once you get it full, you wanna put this over the bucket so that any drippings don't come out. You can fold it over like ears and then like a toothpaste tube. You squeeze with this hand and twist with this hand. So you squeeze it out here, you twist with that to keep pressure on it. It's gonna lay in Good bead like that. And you'll see this can go very, very fast. And then we'll come back, do our verticals. Then we wait and we let all this set up for a little bit. When the mortar it's hard like this, then it's ready to tool. And you wanna wait till it gets like this because if you don't, it's gonna drip and it's gonna stain the face of your brick. You want it to just fall off. So we're gonna use this part of our tool and we're gonna push. And that's gonna force the mortar into the joint. Then you can come back and use the tip of the tool and pull, and that's gonna push it in the way we want it and get it nice and tight. Now, you can smooth the joints out and you'll be able to see that it gets very kind of glossy. And if you want a smooth look, if you've got a clean edged brick, that's fine. This brick is tumbled and it's supposed to look kind of old and vintage and I don't want my mortar joints to look slick like they were just done. So we're gonna leave it a little bit more rough and then we're gonna come over it with a bristle so that it has even a little bit more texture. The last thing we need to do, and I've waited probably 15, 20 minutes since I tooled these joints, you've got to make sure these things are very dry. If you see any streaking come across your bricks, then you need to stop and wait. So um, we're just going at a 45, and this is kind of a short <laughs> thing, so it's hard to do at a 45. But we're just coming through and we're knocking off the little crumblies to make a nice smooth joint. And that's it. I'm using the heel of this tool and I'm pushing and then I'll come back and pull and get that joint nice and deep. And that's just the style I want. If you want a smooth joint, just come in and tool it. It just takes a couple times and it gets nice and glossy and smooth. But I want a little bit of a rough joint. It's been about Eight months since I completed this brick project. I absolutely love it. Everybody who walks in here notices that it just feels like a workshop now. And 
the details, the stack bond here, the basket weave in there. I'm actually gonna put a chalkboard in there. People keep asking me if it's a pizza oven. <laughs> uh, no, it's just supposed to be like a blind window, like an old filled in window. And I'm gonna put a chalkboard there at some point so I can draw and put my diagrams up. But absolutely love the brick. I wanna say a big thank you to General Shale for helping me make this project possible. They did not sponsor this video, but they gave me some discount pricing. I am an architect, so I specify a lot of brick. I tend to get good pricing on brick when I need it, uh, but they did help out quite a bit. Their selection is absolutely amazing. This is the English pub style of brick. It has a lot of variation in color, and the texture is just wonderful because they tumble it. It just feels vintage on day one. It is so cool. It's made such a big difference in my workshop, making it feel more like a home and a place to work than a sterile garage. I hope if you're getting ready to do a thin brick project, this video has helped you out, navigate some of the little details that you might have to do. Even if you're not going to be doing your own thin brick project, I hope you enjoyed watching me provide the labor for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. Feel free to click or tap on the images to check out some of my past builds. If you like my videos, click on the Greg's Garage logo and all my future videos will show up in your YouTube feed.